Today, let's talk about graphic tablets for architects. We're gonna raise some questions around this topic and discuss it. I'm also gonna share my opinion on this and we're gonna take a look at this image, sped up process. So let's jump into it. So recently I received this graphic tablet from x -Pen. Uh, they did send it for free, but this video is not sponsored in any way. Therefore, I'm going to be really honest and sincere here, okay? Quick message, we just launched a visualization competition. Project and Build is live. Links down below to check it out. There's only two weeks left for submissions and the deadline is pretty close, so don't miss out. Cool, so if you saw an architect working 50 years ago, you'd say that drawing is essential to work in this field. As opposed to today, where we've got so many programs to assist us during all stages of a project that one might say, you don't really need to know how to draw. Well, I still believe drawing is really important, especially at the beginning stages of the design. And this video is not to say that graphic tablets will replace drawing all along, far from that, but in a sense, it may bring this craft and some programs that we use closer together. Now to begin with, I'm not gonna lie, at first it's really hard to make straight lines. It does not feel exactly like drawing with pen and paper and it's not intuitive. So my first tip is to practice doing lines across your canvas. Here I'm using Photoshop, which allows me to loosely draw things. And also it has different brush sizes, uh, which I'm gonna mention later in the video. Now when I was a teenager, I used to do professional drawing lessons. <laughs> And this exercise was actually what I did most of the first lessons. So do it before jumping into more serious challenges with a graphic tablet. So I'm using this X-Pen Deco Pro Medium and I've tested another small one before, but I've gotta say that it wasn't as enjoyable as this bigger one. And at first, when I opened this, my question was, why didn't they make the touchy port all the way to the edges? And then after using it for a couple of days, I saw that it was much more comfortable to not get to the edge of the tablet when I got to the corner of my screen. See, I've spent years creating architecture images using just a mouse, and I kind of mastered the art of using a brush to precisely paint things with just a mouse. So I knew that I wouldn't have the same skills with this new tool. So after practicing with the lines that I showed you and using here and there, I decided to draw over a pre-established scene from a 3D software so that I have the base to start with, which would allow me to focus on the lines and the overall composition and not so much on the perspective and getting the building actually drawn. And look, I don't see this as a bad thing at all. I consider now one more representation style in my skill set, where I can mix a hand-drawn technique with 3Ds. Obviously, I still gotta practice a lot, but I liked the end result. By the way, this project is from Felipe from Tech Architectus, and I joined him to represent this project in a national competition. And we got an honorable mention. There's a video here on the channel that talks more about the images for this competition. The link's down below if you're interested. Okay, now comes that part of the video that you might be thinking, shouldn't I just get an iPad with an Apple Pencil? Cause drawing this thing and then looking at the screen doesn't make sense at all. Well, yeah and no. I mean, if you've got the means to have it, go for it. But using an iPad, you're probably going to be more limited in terms of visualization. Here, I'm using to create a simple drawing that it will be much easier to do in an iPad. I know that, but you need to see far ahead. The same images that you create using a mouse where you model something, render it, and then go to Photoshop to do some magic, you can enhance uh, that post-production part by having the skills in a graphic tablet. And I'm not entirely sure here, but I think many visualization studios use either a pen tablet or a pen display, and this allows them to apply effects and corrections much more freely. I know that it looks like I'm trying to convince you to get one, right? But I'm not. This is a topic that I wanted to bring here to this channel, and when XP Pen reached out saying that they wanted to send me a free one, I thought this would be the perfect timing. The reality is that a graphic tablet will fit perfectly in Photoshop work. Period. I don't see me using this for a 3D model or even to do BIM or CAD stuff. Because for me, a mouse is still better when precision is asked and not hand-drawn and artsy benefits. For me, it's an addition to your tools and your skills and not a substitute. But as always, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. As with the other videos here on the channel, we continue this conversation over the comment section. 
and this one wouldn't be different. So have you ever tested a graphic tablet or even a pen display? Is it worth it for architects? Let me know in the comments below. Great, now let's say you want to invest in something like this. What do I think about this exact model that I have here? Links will be in the video description and a proper disclaimer again, I'm not getting anything with the links, so it's up to you to decide. So let's start up with the good things. It feels really robust, it's all made out of metal and it clearly will last a long time. And I said this already, but the size for me is perfect and the pen really ergonomic. Talking about the pen, it doesn't need any type of battery and it comes with several replacement tips. I assume that they eventually will fade out with all the scratching and I didn't feel any lag at all when drawing. And according to the site, it has over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. And apart from, from others that I tested, this one you can tilt the pen 60 degrees, which feels like more of a normal pen. And once you go past the stage of syncing your hand with the screen you're looking at, it feels very natural, I gotta say. Now this next one, I guess you can say it's a good thing. Well, you can use it with an Android. I'm not sure why you would do this, but you can. <laughs> Now, the buttons and the turning wheel would come in this list in the good things, and I tried to use them at first, but it was so much quicker and easier to simply have my left hand on the keyboard to use Photoshop's shortcut. And I know, and I know that you can set up shortcuts, but there were just too many that I used that didn't fit the buttons. Plus, it was a whole other story to memorize them. So I basically used a lot of selections with the M and L shortcuts, and shift for straight lines when needed, although I really try to draw them freely and have that wiggly line look to the drawing. Now you can zoom in and out with the dial wheel, but it was so much quicker with the keyboard, as it was a matter of pressing the Z key and moving in and out with the pen. And the wheel was slower and oftentimes glitchy. But one thing that I thought would be fantastic was to use the wheel to adjust the brush size, but it never really worked. I could decrease it, but never increased back up. It only got smaller. I don't really don't know why. Now, I guess someone that does illustrations can use the dialer's full potential. One thing that I have to mention and that I had to adapt is that I currently have an ultra wide display, which is slightly wider than a regular one. It's 21 by nine, almost like a monitor and a half. So I mapped out the graphic tablet to take only 16 by nine of my display. That way I didn't get any distortions when drawing. If I hadn't done that, the cursor would move much faster in the horizontal axis than in the vertical one. So if that's your case, you might need to take that into account. I guess that sums up the pros and cons, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the graphic tablet. Right, I was almost forgetting, brushes. If you're using this tool, you need to take advantage of different brush types and not use only the standard ones. Usually, I would go on Google to search for free ones, but I recently discovered that Adobe has a bunch of high quality and free brush sets. I don't know how I didn't know about that before, but I'm gonna leave a link down below for you to check it out. I got this set of watercolors there and it was amazing to add details and shadows to the image I was creating. A tip here is to use selections in this stage that allowed me a much cleaner edge while maintaining the artsy effect that a brush gives. Also, take advantage of the layer structure that Photoshop has to offer. In this drawing, I drew everything in black to start with. But then, to contrast with the yellow tones, I clipped a blue fill to the black layers to color these lines. This ability to alter the core of the drawing after it's almost finished, it's actually the main reason I think it's worth doing something like this here in Photoshop. And use masks. This tree at the end was easily done with masks, whereas in a physical drawing, the trees would have to be planned from the start. So I finished up this drawing with a paper texture on multiply blend mode and 50% opacity to emphasize even more that sketch look. You know, this was a fun process, but at first I really thought that nothing was gonna come out of this exercise. But the more time I put into it, it took me around two hours to make it, the more it became clear that it was a matter of adding details and getting to the end part of it, where watercolor effects and color could be added, plus some other elements like people, trees, other little details and so on. So in the end, I liked the result a lot and I'm looking forward to using this technique more in the images I create. Alright, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, it really helps a lot. Subscribe to not miss out on future videos and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the comments or in the next video. Bye!